2011 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board to order. Uh, I'd like to start out by introducing our new planning board member, Joe Shalott. Welcome, Joe. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. The first item on our agenda is the minutes of the previous meeting. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes? Any corrections? I had one minor one on page 9. I have a comment um, about a third of the way down um, in the second sentence of that comment. If we are approving clearing in the wetland buffer area, we need to know that there will be no more runoff into the wetlands that may damage the wetlands. Anybody else? And I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor. Anyone opposed? Abstaining? One abstain. All right. Motion carries. Thank you. The first Item on our agenda is the Stonegate Subdivision Amendment. Early Bird Group is requesting an amendment to the Stonegate Subdivision to add a lot located on Stonegate Road, U319E, amendments to previously approved subdivisions. Would the applicant like to make a presentation? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Rick Light with Light Environmental Design and Rusty Pillsbury, uh, the applicant here tonight to answer questions. Um, I think what I'll do is to do a brief overview of the application and summarizing the high points of the materials that were submitted and maybe walk through, uh, if you'd like, some of the comment letters and address where we are, what, what our uh, thoughts are on some of the comments from staff and department head if that's okay, and then we can look for any board comments from there. Um, the, just as a bit of background, the Stonegate subdivision was approved in 1986 for 51 lots, and it was uh, amended, I think, in 92 for another 16 on, when they uh, added on phase four. So I think the subdivision total has, I believe, 67 lots thereabouts. And if you look at the, the board, I've got a, a mark up here, and I've got one behind you, a rendering, and I'll refer to both of these, but this is the lot of record that we're talking about. It's, it's map 31, lot U9E. Uh, and this is Stonegate Road right-of-way. At Stonegate Road, the, the discussion we're going to have tonight is this right-of-way here is 140 feet or thereabouts wide, which is very abnormal, whereas the rest of all the Stonegate roadways are 50 feet wide. But that is the actual right-of-way as we discussed at, this, discussed at the sketch plan meeting, and this is a lot for a frame of reference. That is a public way, and uh, it also, within the association of Stonegate, Homeowners Association, they have the rights and the abilities to maintain stone walls um, and take care of landscaping within the right-of-way, and there, that has been documented through the application and confirmed, I believe, with the town. And, and uh, so, in the, in the sense of this application, there is landscaping currently, and there's uh, stone walls, especially at the other entrance, that are maintained by the association. So the amendment here is simply to annex this lot here, and behind you here, into the, stone, the Stonegate Homeowners Association. That's the, that's the gist of the application before us. And as Maureen said, this, as mentioned, this is an amendment, and it is considered a major subdivision review, as I understand it. Um, the zoning here is RC within this district, and but I wanted to point out that, and we made a note in our plan, that the normal setbacks for this lot would be 20 feet on all sides in the RC district, um, and the lot size is 20,000 square feet. The actual lot size is, is 47,800 square feet, so it's quite a large lot, uh, but the setbacks actually are increased to 40 feet on the front 25 on the side and rear because that is a that's part of the covenants and restrictions within the homeowners association. So the side front yard setbacks are actually more restrictive than the actual zoning setbacks. That's because uh, that's those are covenants and restrictions within the association document. So I wanted to point that out. 
And the lot currently, it's an interesting lot um, because it's part of an old estate here which has now three lots and we'll have a, this, this is the first lot that was just constructed here, lot, I'll call it lot one for the, for the purpose of discussion with a driveway access off of Mitchell Road. This second lot is, is really interesting because if you've seen the lot, it has incredibly mature vegetation throughout and some very significant trees and which need to be thinned and, and, and cleaned out. And there's actually, there's, there's a number of old gardens and raised beds back in the, the that would be the northern area of the lot and because it was part of a, uh, a former uh, estate there. So it has some really interesting landscaping and specimen trees and through the discussion of the application and rather than adding buffering here, we're actually going to be selectively, I think the applicant wants to selectively remove some of the trees because they're overgrown and thick. So it's, it's from that perspective, it's, it's, it's a really um, attractive lot. And, and in addition to that, the, the lot is in fact serviced by sewer out front, water out front. There's a sewer pump station here that's part of the association. It's a public pump station and we'll be tying it to sewer, which is there's a stub just behind the pump station. That lot will be connecting to sewer there. We'll be connecting to water in the street. There's an eight inch main and there's an uh, underground electric with a transformer here. Electric will be provided right in front of the lot for, for all essential purposes. A couple of points I wanted to bring up there in the application and some of the correspondence. Um, number one is the access. There's been quite a bit of discussion, I remember at the sketch plan meeting and since then about the uh, ability to, to, to access Stonegate Road and what happens in this sort of no man's land here. And we've had some correspondence and emails back and forth with the association, Bob Steyer uh, representing uh, the association, I think the personally as an association council. Um, and uh, Mr. Pillsbury's legal counsel, David Lowry, and essentially there is nothing prohibiting this lot from accessing Stonegate Road. Albeit, we have this area here, or shown on this plan here, we've got about 70 feet of a driveway, which actually, in, on the, so we talked, discussed the sketch plan, it appears to be a, a, something that needs an easement. It does not require an easement, is our understanding from count legal counsel, it's simply a driveway access, albeit about a 70 foot driveway access. Um, I, in the application, I misstated and I apologize that the applicant had secured a final driveway permit. Right now there's a gravel temporary drive uh, to get into the lot. The applicant hasn't yet secured the final permit and will work with Bob Malley to get the final permit. So I wanted to uh, be corrected on that, um, and, but that would be forthcoming. And it's our intention that he would work with Mr. Malley, to, with Bob Malley, to secure the actual location of that driveway and where it connects with the actual Stonegate Road in, in through here. Um, two areas that, in terms of the lot itself, the lot drains essentially to the low, to the south and to the west over here into a culvert and further on into a, a wetland area. And uh, uh, one of the things that we was not shown on the plans but was asked to be shown by the town engineer was a foundation drain and we will add that, we gladly add that to the plan with a daylight uh, foundation drain which would end up in the low spot and through here. And, uh, and it's basically stormwater itself, it continues just to simply flow down the road into a, a drain, drain inlet here and across into the wetlands. Um, the area that I wanted to spend a minute discussing was this piece right here, which is the landscaping. At the last meeting uh, and since then, there has been, there was a discussion that this first lot is part of an agreement with this first lot. As I understand, a driveway was originally intended to go to Stonegate Road the association contested that and a final resolution between the applicant, the town, and Stonegate Association was that this lot would have a driveway off of Mitchell Road, which has been constructed. And as part of that agreement, the applicant would provide landscaping in the, in the, uh, the right-of-way area off the side of the road. And we, there's an agreed upon landscaping scheme, which this plan reflects and that landscaping scheme is shown on the plan here uh, includes a number of uh, shadbush, uh, rhododendrons, uh, white pines, sugar maples, and, uh, and other landscaping uh, within this area through here. And that was, as I understand, that was an agreed upon landscaping scheme and planting scheme. So that will be provided for uh, or funded by the applicant, is that correct? Partially funded by the applicant. And, and uh, so that is part of, the, of this application. 
The other areas I'd like to discuss um, in terms of uh, the, the, the application, um, we do have uh, on the lot here, there is a, uh, um, I don't know if it shows up right here, but there's a, there's a very significant buffer, again, along, as I mentioned, along the side of the lot and completely in the back of the lot, and a cluster of birch trees here, which we'd like to save. And again, the driveway shown here is approximately where the gravel drive is now. And as I mentioned earlier, I think the applicant would, would work with Bob Malley in case they need to adjust its location. I think the intention is to have it correct generally in that location, but the final location may be adjusted just slightly subject to getting an approval from, from Bob Malley. There was a comment raised uh, by the uh, association in recent correspondence back and forth that suggested they would like to have uh, us provide them with a driveway width or driveway location and width as part of that permit is my understanding and we would be agreeable to it a 20 foot driveway including width 13 14 feet but a, a 20 foot i think a 20 foot width subject to any uh, entrance rate on uh, aprons here would be acceptable i think to us to uh, to put a note in the plan which would satisfy the association that the driveway, the driveway pavement wouldn't be 20 feet, but the area of the driveway would be within a certain 20 foot window. And we've agreed that we would add that to the plan and to their, and that, again, that was a request made by the association that we show them a width so that the driveway doesn't extend beyond that location in, when this is all done, said and done. At this point, I think, um, the only other things that uh, I, I think in the overall presentation, if I could just take a minute, I'd like to run down through if it help uh, Amex comments. Would that be appropriate to do that now? And Mr. Malley's comments? Yes. Just to, just to sort of point by point? Yes. So we can get through those. I'll start first with uh, Bob Malley's uh, letter of July 6th. Um, he agrees that we have capacity, that sewer is available for the lot. Um, but that we ought to show the sewer manhole on the plan and location. Um, I believe the sewer manhole is actually shown on the plan, but maybe it didn't. Um, we don't have the inverse. I will get the as built information from Mr. O'Malley and, and we'll, we'll add that to the plan, no problem at all. We're totally in agreement with that. And again, as he pointed out in his letter, and I apologize that the driveway location permit has not been secured. A temporary one has been, but the final one will be secured by the applicant. Uh, the second letter I have here was simply from, uh, the, from the town manager for the applicant to provide an escrow account, which is agreeable to doing or working that out with the town manager, correct? $600. Mm -hmm. And the third is the letter of uh, July 12th from uh, AMEC uh, in terms of the technical review. Uh, they're in agreement that, in their opinion, the uh, number one, that the application is complete. Uh, number two, in terms of stormwater, their comment is that they agree that there is not really a need. We addressed in our application, this lot is but a very small piece of the watershed that encompasses watershed one. It's called 1B within the Stonegate Association. And in fact, when the Stonegate project was developed, the watershed map, which is included in your application, included this lot, developed or otherwise. So they agreed that there is no substantive increase in stormwater by the development of one lot in this watershed and their agreement that we, a stormwater, a detailed stormwater management plan would not be necessary and we concur with that. Item number three was again the question to add a foundation drain and show it on the plan and we're in agreement with that. And the item number four uh, was simply requesting a little more detail on our landscaping here and, and whether or not this is going to be mounded or simply flushed to the ground and added bark mulch. We'll add an additional detail that shows this area just slightly mounded above the contours here and put that detail on the plan. And item number five is also a comment which Mr. Malley brought up about the sewer manhole, uh, to show the final manhole right here, but to add additional detail on the sewer terminus uh, where we're going to be connecting to it. And we'll add that to the plans from the as built from the street. And secondarily, we, I'll, I'll skip number six for a second. We have an updated uh, a plan from the surveyor. 
And note number seven was to add a construction detail, standard detail for construction entrance, and we're agreeable to do that. So when they're working at the site, there'll be some gravel, some crushed stone provided at the end of the driveway so you're not tracking up the roadway. And item number eight, we're agreement to, we can add a pavement trench detail showing the pavement cut when we actually splice in the driveway. So going back to item number six, um, if I could borrow the plan here. Um, item number six, Bear with me for a second. We actually have an updated, which we'll be providing in our follow-up submission, but we have an updated flat by the surveyor, Dan Alfonso. And this is the updated plat, which is just has a few additions that we suggested to the surveyor that he add, anticipating that the board would want these. One of those is the item number six, um, which is uh, addition of a formal signature block. We've added several notes, uh, one referring to this, the, the parcel itself, and that the parcel would be subject to uh, the Stonegate Association Declaration of Covenants uh, as an amended plat. We've added a locust map to the, uh, to the um, plat as well. And again, the applicable setbacks, again, 40 feet, 25 and 25, which are, be, again, the Stonegate Association setbacks, which are more restrictive than the RC setbacks. So I think we've addressed or agree, our agreement addressing those comments. And I think Maureen had a, uh, a memo to the board dated the 19th would you like me to go through those, Maureen, or do you want to cover those items? I, um, yes, because there are some suggestions on here that you did not address, so why don't you go ahead and do that? Okay. Under Maureen's letter of the 19th, uh, which we've received... Um, uh, the, the memo? The memo to the board. Okay. Yep. And it starts with the summary of completeness. Right. We're on the correct, the correct page. Um, item number two, in terms of completeness, the Stonegate Association covenants require that Stonegate Association must approve the lot additions. This documentation has not been submitted. This obviously was something, is something that's boarded, discussed, we discussed at the last meeting. And uh, in the last few days, we have been working with the association to get an actual, the formality would be an amendment to the association documents, Declaration of Covenants, that says basically that this lot can, will be amended into the Stonegate Association and thereby is required to um, comply with all the other rights, uh, restrictions, and, and opportunities of the declaration. Um, the association, we have emails from their council. I assume those have been passed on or they have not been passed on to the... I passed them on, but we might have some technical issues with some people got them and some people okay. didn't. Okay, but we do have emails that have agree, uh, agreement from, uh, from the association through Bob Steyer and also from the, the abutters, the two abutters in support of the application and agreement that they are in support of annexing this to the subdivision or to the association. The formality of that taking place has to happen at an association meeting at which time they would vote on it and, and prepare a formal amendment. Uh, and which would be recorded and then provided to the town. So at this point, we have, I mean, we, we've tried to get a letter from the association, but what we have in, in, in absence of that is, a, um, is our emails. And I would be happy to read uh, the latest email if that would help. It would help. I know I, for one, was not able to open okay. the email train on my computer, so that would be helpful. Okay. Let me just find out where the start's okay. I think they referred to some emails from Bob Steer and, and at least a couple others. And a couple others. Let me, let me just start with his initial. We had a, a we were providing information to Mr. Steyer and I talked with him several times. Um, this is from Mr. Steyer, dated the 18th, an email uh, to myself, copy to Mr. Pillsbury, Maureen, uh, Mr. Weatherby, uh, and a few others who are uh, assumedly abutters. Uh, thanks to Rick for providing the submission materials. Please note that the part of our settlement included a provision that a note shall be added to the plan to indicate that access 
to the stone gate right of way shall be limited to a certain defined width for the driveway. That was that discussion that we would agree to a certain defined width of the driveway area, which would be 20 feet. Um, in, in the, so we would be agreeable to adding a note for their purposes on the final plat. Uh, I can't read any of the notes on the plan attached, but we need to be sure that this proposed language is included with an appropriate defined width. And again, we were, we're agreeable to that. Otherwise, in speaking for myself only, I support the amendment to the subdivision, assuming that the plan is amended as indicated above. I've been copying David Weatherby, whose property abuts the lot at issue, and Rachel, uh, excuse me, on the... Uh, Stammy Eshkin. Try that again? Stammy Eshkin. Stammy Eshkin, thank you. The association president on Rick's communications. While I understand that they are similarly supportive, I want them to be able to express their own sentiments. Please let me know if you have any questions. Reply from David Weatherby. The Weatherby's are supportive of the amendment with the provision included by Bob below, which was the note, and then email by Mrs. Stamens. In. I also agree and am pursuing agreement from the Stonegate Association per the bylaws, and she is the association president. So at this point, um, that's the best we've been able, we expected a letter, but I think that email chain um, documents that they're in support of the, the application and annexing the property to the association. Does that satisfy the board while we're on that item? Sure, go ahead, why don't we? Have they given you any indication on when the, when the association will meet to vote on this? I don't know. I got, I, no, I can't give you a date. I got the impression that it might be a late, so I know how these associations work, a late summer, early fall meeting, but um, I was suspecting August, but I don't know. I do not know. I can't answer that. We could certainly find out. I have no problem making a condition of approval. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. The second item under completeness is location map. Um, no location map is included. We now have a location map on the, on the flat. And uh, the third item under completeness, item 10C, was uh, a, a request for a driveway uh, easement. And again, there's been some clarification. And my understanding after discussion with Maureen and, and with Rusty is that the lot one, I'm going to call this lot one driveway when constructed off of Mitchell Road, actually, as I understand it, physically encroached just slightly the turnaround into the right-of-way. And that was corrected uh, through the council last week, I believe, and an easement has been granted for that to happen. Um, and then uh, Maureen brought up the question of whether or not we needed a, an actual easement for the, any other driveways within the right-of-way. And it's, it's an, as odd as it may sound, a right-of-way is a right-of-way. If you have an easement, where does it go to? And our understanding from Council David Laurie through an email is that we do not need any easement. This is a, it's simply a driveway access to a right-of-way, albeit very wide. There's no need for any additional easements for access to this right-of-way. Is that the correct understanding, Maureen? Exactly correct. Okay. So I think we're all set there. Um, item number one, a soil erosion control plan has not been provided. And the uh, applicant has identified plant buffers, which would be an effective element of an erosion control plan. And we've agreed with the Amex plan to add erosion controls to the, to the plan. We've agreed with that. Um, 23A on the checklist, the applicant has not submitted information regarding technical and financial capability. And I believe the applicant, I could speak for him now, would be glad to provide that if required. Excuse me? Just technical and financial capability, just a, a statement of yeah, he'd be glad to provide that. Um, items for discussion on Maureen's letter, the second portion, uh, below is a summary of items for planning board discussion beyond completeness, which are the technical items. The driveway permit. Applicant has been in communication for several months with the Public Works Director regarding driveway permits. This is in process. And I think the idea is to get that driveway permit secured as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, number two is the building envelope. Planning Board may want to add a note to the plan that reserves the natural vegetative buffer of the lot by restricting activities outside the building envelope to installation of driveways and utilities. And I don't think we have any problem with that. Do you? Lawn, I assume that includes lawn area. The, the envelope could, in fact, because there's a great expanse of lawn here, but an envelope could include lawn. Yes, That's, if its please, current condition is lawn. Well, the, the challenge is where you already have lawn, mm -hmm. um, there wouldn't be any prohibition against continuing to have lawn. Okay. But where you have 
grown vegetation and shrubs that create a buffer, mm -hmm. you would have to leave those where they are with outside the building envelope. Would, would, well, the only concern is would thinning be allowed? And the reason I, I ask, we, we walk the site and there's areas along here that are just full of thick vines and it, it just from a horticultural standpoint, I'm, I'm not a landscape architect, but need to be thinned and cleaned, not... Yeah, and, and obviously the canopy over the house, but I think that would be outside the buffer for 25 feet. But we need, so there may be a need for some clearing, but there's no intent to go in and, and clear the buffers, but simply to be able to work in the buffers. You know, the, this is the decision of the planning boards to make, but the problem we've had in the past is when we've put language in there that reasonable people are supposed to use that allow for removal of diseased and dying vegetation, everything gets cleared out, and there's no buffer left. So, I mean, I, I would leave that to the board. If you've got, you know, invasive, bittersweet, mm -hmm. you wanted to say we have to remove the, the bittersweet, I mean, that's something that's fairly concrete that you can talk about. But I understand what you're saying, Rick, and yeah. I don't disagree with you, but every time, well, not every time, but a lot of times when we've given some flexibility in there, the buffer that everybody thought was going to be maintained was basically wiped out. And, you know, the, the subdivision ordinance does require that a buffer be established. Usually, mm -hmm. you know, developers will take advantage of existing vegetation as the quickest, easiest, cheapest way to meet that requirement. Perhaps if we could maybe modify, and I'm sure that's the intent, if we could modify that to allow for thinning as thinning or maintenance of existing vegetation. I mean, I know, I, I understand where you're coming from, the, 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 to allow that because if you walk back in there, it's, it's my perception that some of that would, if the lot owner would want to clean that out, it's, 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 it's very, very thick. And I don't mean to clear, but simply to, to maintain. And I mean, um, are you agreeable with something of that nature? Yeah. Sure, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Oh, maybe I can clarify. Um, what I'm thinking is the, the, the there's, a, there's a setback line along here, 25 feet? 25. 25 feet. We, we can't, we're not going to clear anything out 25 feet off this line. We, we don't want to. The Weatherbees probably don't want us to. Um, you know, there might be some blowdowns and some dead trees in there. I know there's a dead birch tree right about here that's got to come out and it's laying down. But in the front, there's just some pines, some scraggly pines. And the other thing is we're going to have a lot of utility drainage front, yeah. Yeah, coming, coming down here. So there's a certain amount of um, plantings that have to come out in order to place the house. Is, is, that, is that pretty clear? Yeah, and I think so, that, no make, just to interrupt, that no makes it clear that we can put driveway utilities. That's, that's the separate point. Right. And we've already cleared up with Bob Malley what, what shrubs need to be trimmed back as far as to get the 120-foot um, site distance, I think it is. Right along here, there's, there's some... Um, Bob Malley has already given his blessing as to cut this back to get the site distance. So there is some trimming that has to be done. We usually get Bob Malley over there. That, that's, in, that's in the right that's in the of way. Right of way. <laughs> it wouldn't be affected by that now. Are the trees that you're showing in the north half, are those accurate? Those uh, These are, close. It's, it's more schematic based on the aerial. Um, it's, it's, I would call it schematic. But, there, but we've looked at it, and for instance, the birch cluster that's just left of the driveway, uh, there's a, a cluster of a, a triple birch. It's really nice. Right here. It, it just, it's right there, and it, it, it just, it's just a nice anchoring corner. Yeah, you'd like to save that, that cluster of trees and protect that. And the rest of it is very, very thick, and, but it's just suggestive. But there are, like I said, there's probably more vegetation there than we actually show. And there's a significant amount of, of vegetation on the adjacent lots, shrubs. And again, this is an old estate, mature shrubs, hedgerows. It's, it's really an interesting, you know, interesting lot in that respect. There is, there is tremendous plantings. There's some oh. more mature plantings over here. Tremendous plantings in here that are all going to stay. And that, but of course, those are all within the envelope. After let me, let me, before you do that, Liza, let me just make a procedural note here. Normally, what we would do is go through kind of your entire presentation and open a public comment period. We have not noticed a formal public hearing. But since the two of you are the only people sitting in front of us, uh, there are no members of the public here to comment tonight. 
so I think we can go right into the board discussion and as long as we're on this landscaping issue let's why don't we finish with that but I did want to make that note for the people who might be listening at home and can't see that there's no one sitting out there so Liza go ahead oh yeah after walking the lot a few weeks ago um, I'm more worried about the establishment of vegetation in front of the house and um, in the right of way which is you know owned by the town than clearing some of the vegetation because as Rusty mentioned uh, the weather bees have a lot of vegetation they already have a really well established buffer and so I I would like to see more trees in the front of the house and frankly to the left of the house between that you know new construction and the proposed building because that's pretty spare um, between those two houses and I think it's going to be um, you know l less attractive from Mitchell than if there were trees added to the plan there are you talking about in the right-of-way or actually on the lot? In front of the house, I think uh, the plan would benefit from some planting but and also to the, the left of the house. On the, in the right-of-way or in front of the house? <coughs> well, I think lot. since we're not discussing the right-of-way because there's no easement, so we cannot legally obligate them to plant anything in, in the town's land, it would have to be in front of the house. Okay. I think it would look nicer if it were in the right-of-way, but uh, there's no easement here, so... I don't think we can obligate them to plant anything to, in the town to land. A little bit. I, I think what you're saying is what you would like. I don't. We're not going to touch anything in here other than what Bob Malley has asked for to be trimmed back for sight distance. We're not going to touch right. the drive. The, the base of the driveway is here. We are. There are some pines here. There are substantial pines, and there's a there's a huge pile of debris that the owner has been stockpiling for 38 years, which is debris that's going to come out. Uh huh. But with all due respect, this is directly south facing. And when, when having numerous open houses on this house, one of the best pieces of the property was southern exposure. People absolutely loved it. So uh, I would be apprehensive to put any plantings here just because I think there's, there's so many trees, so many, so many plantings on the lot already. I would rather see this open a little bit just to allow the southern exposure. Uh, we've even had many people ask if it is a for solar gain homes, you know, green homes and things like that. Yeah, if that's so important, I wouldn't put your garage doors facing south. <coughs> As drawn, the garage doors are facing south. On the other hand, the snow melts better in the driveway. But I mean, we could, you know, we haven't we haven't specifically said if the driveway is going to enter from the side or the front. We don't that. I don't know as it gives a given yet. Gotcha. But the house itself, we, we love to have the southern exposure. Yeah. In fact, some of the raw, like some of the the agreement on this landscaping here was that they could not exceed this line, so as not to um, take away the sunlight from this house, the, the first house that was built. Gotcha. The, the sunlight. My is, impression is it's pretty raw looking right now. That well, whole exposure from the road looking north, and from and from Mitchell looking east. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and I don't disagree with those comments either. Uh, but I think when I've been on the site, it's, I, I don't know if you're, people are clear, the lot line, it's, it's really deceptive. The lot line, there's a blue, st a couple of stakes, a number of different stakes. There's a transformer right here that's just about the property line. And you go back in 70 feet and you realize that the lawn, this open expanse of lawn now, is really not their lawn. It's that area, it's, it's, it feels funny. You think it's someone. It's within the right of way. That's the area that's going to be landscaped. And I think the intent would be that is going to provide the buffering to this lot, which is open. The lawn is open. The whole intent is to provide that buffer. And it is, as you come into here, it starts. There's already some small. There's some small uh, trees, uh, like four-inch diameter trees and whatnot in here. I think it selectively it already breaks things up. So I think I don't want to speak for your comments, but I think this would might address that open feeling because I have the same feeling too when I when I walk in here right now. And it, it, like I said, it seems like it's a it's, it'd be a great yard for Frisbee, you know, and, but it's not going to be. It's going to be, you know, protected by buffering there. But maybe that will take care of the... Let me, let me add to that, too. The, where the, there's, a, there's about four to six maple trees right here and maybe even a pine tree. Then there's more pine trees and shrubbery here, you know, blocking the pump house from this site, which is ideal. Um, it, it will look a lot better when this is filled in. So, I mean, I think that there's, there's actually quite a few trees there. And, I, and what I've done is I've driven through Stonegate 
and, and looked at existing homes. And I think with, with just clearing where the driveway goes here, we're only going to take down a few pines. I think there's a couple of uh, cherry trees where the house has to go. And, but those, those, again, are in our, in our lot. Um, and I think it's going to look, it's going to look fine. I think. I mean, do you like the way that the, the new house on the corner? Well, looks? how many? See this area here? Yeah. We, we took four trees down. We took numerous, numerous, numerous yards of bittersweet out. It was a jungle. But we took four trees down so that it was all bittersweet. So that's why it, it jumps out at you as, you know, wide open. But when these plantings are going in, there's a numerous amount of plantings going in here. And I think with those tied together with the existing maples and pines here, along with the maples and pines over here, I think it's going to look, in my opinion, it's going to look okay. But I, you know. Can I ask uh, other board members a question? This is the kind of issue, particularly given the very unusual easement lot line configuration here, that for me to um, form any judgment other than what appears to be the conclusion of the neighbors and the developer by what they've negotiated on this plan, for me it would require a site visit. Otherwise, I would be inclined to defer to what the negotiated deal is here in the absence of any members of the public who have come. So perhaps this would be an appropriate time to discuss whether other folks are more familiar and comfortable with being able to figure out where these lines are or whether a site visit is something that we need to talk about. Is this an aesthetics point of view? I mean, Excuse me? Is this aesthetics or have we got some sort of, uh, boundary problems in terms of the amount of water, the amount of vegetation using water and acting as a drying agent? I don't know that we have boundary problems in terms of anyone disagreeing the location of the boundary. It is in our subdivision ordinance that we need to be concerned with appropriate buffering. We also need to be concerned with adequate access to sunlight. Those are both subdivision standards, and it sounds as though they may, <laughs> they may be somewhat in conflict given this southern exposure. I guess my personal inclination is that knowing that the landscape buffering in this wide strip has been heavily negotiated with the neighbors and those who see this most often to defer to that, but I would not object to a site walk and giving us the opportunity to determine whether we agree. I mean, I, I looked at Stonehenge, you know, from, from what you can see, I thought, think that the aesthetics of the place, but the people that live there would know that or would be happy with the aesthetics. But from another point of view, perhaps, you know, from soil and from, as you say, light, perhaps, that you need a site visit. That that's we can't require landscaping outside of the boundaries here, but we can certainly take into account the landscaping that's going to happen around it to determine whether the subdivision standards are met. Victoria? Well, thank you. I've also um, gone out a couple of times and did a site walk myself. And um, first of all, the new map over there, does it have a legend on it? Because when I brought my map out, I couldn't tell if some of these trees were proposed on lot 9E or if these trees are existing. And tonight I think I'm hearing that these trees are existing. The trees are exist. The trees that we're showing are exist existing, okay. other than the landscape, the landscaping here, which is specific landscape. So those are proposed. You, I would probably say that at some point you'd want to put a legend onto this map okay. because it's not clear. Now, as far as the landscaping goes, when I walked there, um, I was keeping in mind um, Section 16-3-1, item C, the general standards of the subdivision design that says plants or other types of vegetative cover shall be preserved or placed throughout and around the perimeter of any proposed subdivision to provide an adequate buffer uh, for the separation between subdivisions and abutting properties. So I am specifically looking at the um, west side, I believe it is, on lot, between lot 9E and lot 9B. Uh, that bush is depicted is much smaller in real life 
And so I am concerned that there is not an adequate buffer between the subdivision, which would be Lot 9E, and the abutter, which would be Lot 9D. And I would like to see more of a substantial buffer in, go into, yes. You're talking in here. In there, not in the right of way, but right on Lot 9E within the 25 foot uh, space right there, so that there could be a substantial buffer. Now, as far as in the front of the home, not in the right of way, but right into the front of the home, um, you're right, there is um, some sewer pump stations. That's a 10 foot tall sewer pump, pump station with an antenna on top of Correct. it. Um, there's a, um, a manhole cover that's not flush. It is a little bit higher. Yeah, it's off the ground. And another um, existing sewer pump station. So I, I, I can appreciate you don't want to block out the sun and that there are some diseased trees. I did see something that I was questioning too. Maybe you could do some plantings that don't block the sun but possibly can block some of the manhole covers and the uh, pump station. I'd be interested in, if we ended up doing a site walk, getting the um, opinion of the rest of the board as far as that goes. Uh, are, we, are we concerns. allowed to do that? That's just the town right of way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the town right of way. Um, <clears throat> where the pump station is, the pump station is, is going to be quite a ways down Stonegate from the front of the house. And there's already some existing shrubs and trees around the pump station. Um, I, I, don't know if you're going to be able to see the pump station from the house. Possibly a site walk, if the rest of the board considers that appropriate, may decide that. <clears throat> Madam Chairman, I'd recommend a site walk, and I'd like to ask the applicant, if I was to go there, is it possible to see these various, like where the building's going to be and where the driveway's going to be? Is that staked out in any way to look at? The driveway, where's your pointer? The driveway... There's a rough, rough grade driveway to probably just about here, maybe a slightly more, just, just to get access to get in there for the heavy equipment. Okay. Um, the house is not, not there by any means. There, you'll see this cluster of birches right here. We refer to it as the Buddha birches because there's a Buddha statue in there, so that's the Buddha birches. Um, those we do want to stay, and the, and the idea is the driveway comes in and just curves around the birches to enter into the house. So the, the birches will stay. There's a cluster of maples, I believe, right out here in the right-of-way next to the transformer. Those will stay, of course, because that's the right-of-way. Um, there's, a, there's a numerous amount of pines in here. We only want to take back enough so that the canopy's not overhanging the property. And enough to, and there really isn't much in the, in the way of, in the front here of blocking the sun. So if we were to go there, though, we, you would be able to show us, show me, specifically where we're at on the face of the earth. And yep. But now you've shown the building forward in the site. What's to prevent someone from purchasing the lot and deciding they want to push the building way back towards the back? And in order to do that, they'd end up clearing a lot of what you're showing as buffer because it's within the uh, buildable lot area. Well, at, at, at this point, we're building, we're planning on building a spec house, so we'll be the ones building it. If that happens, which is a possibility, they can, theoretically, if I'm not mistaken, they can put the house anywhere within the building envelope. And, and I mean, right. I'm assuming they have the right to do that. If the board feels that that buffer is important in the back, in the northern portion of the site there, I mean, that's almost half the site that you could wipe out. The, your buffer, do we need a preservation plan and say what trees we want to keep? Maureen? That was the, that really was this, the intent of the recommendation that a note be added to the plan regarding what's allowed outside the building envelope. It's been... But that's in, I'm talking about I, what's I, in I understand and, and, you know, my big, I have, the, the way we've usually approached it is your building envelope is your building envelope, and you can put your buildings in the envelope. If the board, and, and you know, there seems to be some stress about saying you can't cut things outside the building envelope. If the board wanted to preserve that more of that back area, what I would suggest you do is you change the shape of the building envelope. And that has been done in the past. It's not done that often. 
but there are times where a lot will include a significant chunk of ledge that people think adds to the character or an RP2 wetland, and that's the, that is the beauty of the building envelope. It's a very clear, and you know just as well as I do, it's a very clear way to show people this is where you can do things and this is where you can't. But if you create a building envelope and then you don't say what's allowed outside it, it's kind of a wasted exercise. And I would say I'm, I'm a little taken back tonight only because, believe it or not, this was actually two lots. This was two 100-foot wide lots that we combined and made one. We just didn't, we thought that it, it belonged as one, one lot. I, I just thought it was a shame to cut it in half. We could have easily cut it in half and had three, three buildable lots, one, two, three. We just thought that the site deserved, you know, a more... It just, it just didn't deserve two houses, it deserved one house. So I, I thought we were already preserving. Yeah, I wasn't saying cut it in half. I was asking what would prevent somebody from deciding yeah. to build a car in the but back I, I, I guess have a long driveway. I look at that as it's, it's their land, it's their property. As long as they're within those setbacks, the setbacks were designed, were within those setbacks. I'm just, you know, I don't know. Carol Ann? I think we're having a lot of discussion that uh, would benefit from being from looking at the property while we're having these discussions rather than trying to visualize some people have seen it some people haven't and I also think before we restrict somebody to what they can do on property that they own that is well within the, the rules that we'd better be very darn sure that uh, that it's worth worthwhile because that's asking a lot of somebody to say we're gonna take a lot that's already twice as big as it needs to be for the for the area it's in and tell them they can only build on half of it. That, I have a problem with that. So I would really like to see it and I'd like to see it as a group so we can hear all the same answers and so I am in favor of the site walk. So why don't we see if we can schedule a site walk? Want to give us some suggested times, Maureen? Well, the next meeting of the I believe the deadline for the next planning board meeting is the end of this month. Mm -hmm. Typically, you try to do something before the submission deadline so the applicant can benefit, excuse me, so the applicant can benefit from your comments. Um, this time of year, uh, the board has been willing to do site walks at the end of the weekday. Um, in order to save the weekends, there's still enough light. I don't know if, if that's convenient for folks or if you want to look at the other option is Saturday morning. The, the one thing I would say is I have a, um, there are a number of concerns I have about the notes on the plan, some of which may be addressed by the new plan you posted up there. Before we do a site walk, I'd like to see the updated version of what you now have produced that we haven't had a chance to look at. With the chair's permission, we have copies of the updated plan. If we could, that'd like, be we'd great. Be happy to hand okay. them out tonight. But other than that, what do people think in terms of? I would rather do it in the evening. Evening. All right. Um, this week. Yeah, I don't. I don't see any particular need to put it off. What about this week? What do people? Wednesday, Thursday. I can't do Friday. This week? Yeah, this week I could do uh, tomorrow night or Thursday this week. Thursday. Is there any? Sirs, what can everybody do this, this Thursday? By Thursday. Two days. Two days. Two days from yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. This Thursday. Everybody down at that end this Thursday? I can do that. It's 5.30, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Is it all right with you all? I think and I is can, that I, enough notice to the public? If yes. the, I think I can make it. I can't say with absolute certainty, but I believe I can. Or an alternative might be uh, next Monday. That doesn't work, okay. We, we have a planning board member who can't make it before 5.30. 5.30 Monday works for me. I don't, I don't know if I can be there or not, but I think I can make it, but it's, I've got a possible conflict. But you can be there? Okay. okay. You need to be there, too. Yeah, I think that would be... Uh, if, it, if it's... To get the no question difference, answered. If there's no difference to the board, is the 25th, Monday the 25th? 
any better for anybody at 5.30? It's not good? Can't do that. Um, I'd have to push it back to 6. Looks like we can't. How about Tuesday the 26th? Tw the 26th. How does that work? I can't do it. Next. After a week, a week from tonight, does that work? Does that work? A after 6? Quarter 6? 6 o'clock? I need more time to get yeah. One night now? Next six Tuesday, two. 6 o'clock? I won't be here next week. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> If Thursday is the better night, I'll, I'll I can revise my I can make it work if it's if it's to the best of everyone's schedule. Th this Thursday would it be better for you if we did it at six rather than five thirty. Is actually f the time is fine. I've just got another. I, I can make an arrangement for my, another Thursday appointment. So let's just do a Thursday at five thirty if that works for everybody. Okay, and just good. Get it, okay, mm -hmm. and you'll send out a notice July twenty first, five thirty, and we'll meet at the southern entrance to Stonegate. Okay. Is there a place to park? Um, Long road? Okay. I'm sorry? Okay. And there's a mountable curb. That's not the best situation. There's a Cape Cod curb, so you can pull up. You can park on Stonegate Road. On the, on the road, okay. Good. I think that will be helpful. Okay. Should we continue down the list? Sure. Okay, so we've discussed uh, uh, the building envelope landscaping. Again, we've discussed that we are proposing the landscaping. This is item number three under discussion. And the recording plat. Uh, this is what you have in front of you now is the updated recording plat. Again, which does include the signature block, as I discussed earlier. It added the, the new setback lines with a note uh, referring to note. Four, which which indicates that the setback lines are per not the zoning but for the declaration and covenants for the association and uh, then uh, note number three which I thought was important was indicates that map U31 lot 9E which is this lot is amended to the Stonegate subdivision um, which is and um, the whole intent of the plan uh, can I make a comment on that while we're at it um, I think it's important that the recorded subdivision plan give an appropriate formal name date recording book and page number for the declaration of covenants for Stonegate as amended um, and also a reference a formal legal reference to whatever the new amendment is that's going to annex this property. We can record, record, the, I think we can record the document first. Usually these are done at the same time. Record the declaration first and then record. If, if, if it, you don't have, you, you need the book and page, if you have the book and page number of the original document and the existing amendments and then you make reference to the new one, you don't need the book and page number okay. of the new one. Okay. It's just so that it's absolutely clear because I think a number of the issues that come up in the subdivision ordinance that we need to be concerned about are also addressed in the Stonegate documents. So I think it's an important part of our approval to know that all of those covenants, or not all of them, but many of those covenants also protect this law. And restrict this lot. That can, that can easily be done. Just reference the book. If this is going to be, um, this can be sent over to the registry. It, I guess it's a version of this that what we just got is okay. what would be recorded. Just for um, nitpicky, it's not Greystone Road. It's Rockcrest Drive. It's right by the way. Good point Rockcrest Drive. Good point. Thank you. And it just uh, that's that's not a problem at all. Just in terms of sequencing, typically what the board, I'm assuming the board would say, is that final plat to be signed upon those documents being recorded. You sign the plat, then it goes to the registry. So it's a two-step process. So that, and, that and be this one should also reference the existing recorded subdivision plats, book and page. And I believe so it's very clear what we're doing here because it gets. It's, well... It, it, yeah, book page, page 158, uh, book 158, page 4 is, is the, the initial plan reference, which... But you said there was another one? 
There, there have been a number, in my understanding, in, in my research, and I'm not an authority, there have been a number of amendments to the subdivision. Minor. My, minor amendments over the years. So maybe just by putting as amended. As amended, okay. Yeah. The, amend, the major amendment was to add the Rockcrest Drive section of Stonegate. And since it doesn't directly abut this lot, it didn't seem like it was that important because this lot is abutting the original Stonegate subdivision. Right, but I think for, so that it, one of the things that I guess I would rise in, in another few things is that things such as the affordable housing requirements appear not to apply here because we are just adding a lot to an existing subdivision. At some point, when you add enough lots to an existing subdivision, land that was not previously part of that subdivision, it seems to me that perhaps those affordable housing requirements ought to begin to, to apply. Um, because it, it's land that totally was not involved. So it, if at any point there were five lots that had now been added to the Stonegate subdivision, since the applicable date of the affordable housing requirements, it seems conceivable to me that the affording, house, house, affordable housing requirements do apply and that the only reason they are not applying here is not because you have an old subdivision, but because you've only added one more lot and don't get to that major subdivision threshold as to the new land. In any event, I think it's very important that it's perfectly clear what gets added so that we don't avoid triggering our improved ordinances because you're choosing to hook on to an old subdivision rather than create a new one particularly when you start talking about the fact that this lot actually could be two lots and so we could be having more houses here that were part of this. So I think it's very important that it's clear exactly what was added and exactly when it was added. And putting it in, the, in all that recording information just helps that. So on the recording flat, yeah, we'll add that. We'll be gladly glad to add the additional notes and references to both the association covenants and restrictions and the uh, the most recent uh, recorded flat uh, and or add the terms as amended and change the Rockcrest Drive, drive uh, change the road from Greystone to Rockcrest Drive. Thank you for noticing that. And the other comments that were we previously discussed. Uh, the item number five, the open space impact fee should be paid prior to recording the plat. I'm assuming that's acceptable, it's painful, but acceptable. And number six, town engineer's letter. Yeah, we've already been through that and we agree with all the town engineer's comments and we agreed to update our plan uh, to address their comments. I believe that takes care of all the... I have one other procedural issue that we can either address now or we can address at the next meeting which we now obviously have to have um, and that is you refer in your submission to the fact that we don't need to go through all of or you suggest that we don't need to go through all of the standards of um, 16-3-1 the subdivision requirements in fact, although you may not need to provide separate data as to each of the items in 1631, we as a planning board do need item by item to determine that those have been met to the extent they are applicable. I don't think it's quite enough to say, well, it's a new amendment so we don't have to go through it. I think that as I read the statute, it specifically requires us. It says we shall review 1631. So I think that we need to go through that point by point and make a finding that everything in 1631 has been complied with, either because it's affirmatively met or because it's inapplicable to this individual lot. And you, you haven't provided anything in your materials to allow us to do that, and, and I don't think we've done that yet. 
Um, so we could do that as part of our next meeting because I think there's a lot of more, a lot more information that we're going to get on those points. Typically, that is something I would prepare for you in a memo that you would get next. Week. Okay. So we're not, since we're not going forward with a final motion tonight, I don't think we need to. Uh, Madam, craft Chair, that Madam Chair, to be, just to be clear, that was something you wanted us to provide, or Maureen, you'll provide as a point of, as a point of the checklist. I mean, if you want to write something up, uh, you feel free. But typically, um, the yes. memo that uh, the planning board receives from me that includes motions mm -hmm. also has a summary of each standard and um, my effort to determine if you've met the standard. We're fine with that. So I don't know what other comments people have, but since we don't make a formal finding of completeness on this, it sounds like what we're doing is having a, um, a site walk and tabling this to the next meeting. And I assume as long as we're having a meeting, we might as well have a formal public hearing. Anybody have any other comments you want to make now? Yeah, Victoria. We've covered a lot, so excuse me if we've already covered these points. Go ahead. Uh, I was wondering if the applicant would be able to um, provide information demonstrating financial and technical capability? Yes. I'm not sure if we covered that, but it, it would, would you be able to provide that information? Absolutely. And just in terms of procedurally, uh, Maureen, our submission time frame for the August meeting would be the end of this month? It would be, the, yeah, 18 days before the meeting. Yeah, and so we'll have time. What we'd like to do, we we'd like have to, time. Yeah. yeah, we'd like to come out of the site walk. What we'd like to do is, is address these items. They're, they're sort of, they're all minor, but collectively, have these all addressed to make a resubmission so that at the next meeting everything is taken care of and, and, and from a technical standpoint everything has been addressed. And the final point, did we uh, discuss a performance guarantee for the improvements in the public right of way? Uh, could that be please be mm -hmm. provided? Yeah, how, how is that going to be determined at this point? Well, typically, just for the um, landscaping? What, what you should be doing is making determine, you should make a decision yeah. whether or not you want to provide an escrow account or a, an actual letter of credit. Uh, we have forms that have been approved by our attorney for each option, so I can provide those to you. And then, um, as the applicant, you would be required to make a, a list of all the improvements that should be covered by the performance guarantee and break it down by unit cost and quantity. If you could include that in your next submission, then I can have it reviewed, um, both, both the letter of credit or escrow account and the estimate reviewed, so that would be ready for the meeting in August with the planning board. Okay, and just to be clear, what we're talking about is the only area of work within the right-of-way that's not associated with simple utility services would be the landscaping, correct? And that's my understanding. We can talk about two different things, financial performance ability. There are two, there are two, those are two different things. One is, is for you to show that as the applicant, you have the financial capability to construct the project as approved. The other piece is a guarantee that's given to the town that the work that has been required um, will be performed, will be done. And it's a financial guarantee. The town holds that. When you have completed the work and we inspect it, we release that guarantee. Right. And, and does that include the landscaping in the right-of-way, which is a subject of a separate agreement, or does it not in this it case? It should include everything. Now, okay. in the past, where, for example, an applicant had to install a public water line and they had entered into a contract with the water district for the water district to install the water line. The town has accepted that evidence of a contract as that piece of the performance guarantee covering the water line. So if, for example, you may have already come to some agreement as to how that landscaping is going to be installed and it's already been paid for, that could be wrapped into a performance guarantee. Okay. My, I, I, agree, the I, was, I, Maureen, I agree with that because I think for the minor, in terms of financially minor, I would say amount of work, uh, that would be much more it, less cumbersome is to simply provide a contract between Stonegate Association, if you're going to help fund that, I would assume, and a contractor to do that work. And then their contract would, in, in industry standard of care, would be have a one year warranty on those plants in addition, which is really what you're looking for. Yeah, I'm suggesting that the details of how you work that out are something yeah. that you don't have to do right okay. now with the planning board. Okay, but um, I think the, okay. the details of performance guarantee are usually worked out at the staff level, um, in particular with the town manager. 
I think we can come to an so agreement of a simple way to, to deal know, with that. We're we'll not a major, it not a major uh, uh, construction item. And, you know, landscaping that is required as part of the subdivision standard, even if it's not in the right of way, can be subject to a performance mm -hmm. guarantee. So what you're saying is that everything that the planning board is going to require has to be guaranteed. Yes. With, with financial. Yes. That, I mean, they, you don't have to bond any part of the house because that's private. But anything that is required as part of a subdivision standard can be subject to a performance guarantee. If you had to install a light. No. So really it's more water. For, for you, yeah, for you it would be, um, it would probably be your sewer connection. I mean, and even that, we usually don't bond individual sewer connections. We just bond the main line. So for you, it's pretty much going to happen. Landscaping and if they required landscaping on the lot. The landscaping, are you talking about landscaping on the, on the Any Any landscaping that would be required by the planning board to meet the subdivision standard, whether it's in the right of way or on the private lot. Yeah, I, yeah, I would agree. Those are the only public improvements that we're talking about, essentially, other than uh, typical single lot erosion controls, which are typically not bonded for a single, a single lot, so in, in the interest of the public. Those would be the only items that I can think of. There's no street lighting. There's no other right. main extensions or anything like that. Just my answer. And then we'll get a letter confirming that we that can, has been work worked out. Uh, what what I would recommend to the planning board is that if the that you would put a if if you want a performance guarantee, you should just make that a condition of approval. Okay. That it has to be prepared, has to be in place prior to any work done on the site. And then the actual mechanics of how that guarantee is put together is usually handled at the staff level. Okay. And when I say staff level, the amount of the guarantees reviewed by the town engineer, the, uh, the terms of the guarantee are reviewed by the town attorney, and the whole package is also subject to the approval of the town manager. Okay, and in terms of financial and technical capability, that, for that we get a letter. For that you should be receiving. Okay, but that it's a letter from the town manager. It's, the applicant has a couple of options. Um, sometimes applicants will provide a letter from their bank asserting that they are financially solvent and can complete the project. Uh, for applicants who would like to keep uh, their finances uh, private, they can meet privately with the manager, have a meeting with him, show him their finances, and the manager can submit a recommendation to the council. So. There's not one way to meet that standard. And I just want to say I think that's important in this case because I drove through Stonegate on my way here and there are um, five properties for sale in that development right now. So I just feel like it's important because things could suddenly change and there could be even more properties for sale there. And you know, it's risky, it seems. So. Do you have anything else there, Victoria, on your list? No, thank you. Okay. So is anyone ready to make a motion? I think it would be tabling and then setting a public hearing for our August meeting at this point. I'll make a motion. Victoria? Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Early Bird Group LLC for an amendment to the Stonegate submission to add a lot located at 10 Stonegate Road be tabled to the regular August 16, 2011 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. A second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, that's unanimous, all of us. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, very you very much. much. We'll so see we'll see you, see you Thursday night. Thursday night, 5.30. Sure. So I have another item of business I yes. want to discuss with the board. So as I was reviewing this um, application, I was reminded about the um, open space impact fee and how if you um, do the math of $4,455 per um, 12,900 square feet, that comes out to $15,000 a speaker. And um, I think we all know that the town can't buy land to compensate for our current open space ratio for $15,000 an acre. And um, I also saw in the ordinance that it's the town council's job to update that periodically. But I was wondering if, as a planning board, we can take the initiative 
to um, update that formula um, to, uh, to a more realistic market-based number. Maureen, can we initiate something like that, or does it have to in be initiated by the town council? Well, the, the planning board's had some relationship with the council lately about when they refer things to you and when they don't refer things to you and when you're working on things that they haven't referred to you. Perhaps you would like to defer this discussion to a workshop. And Good plan. I can provide you for the workshop a copy of the... Uh, the open space impact feedback sheet that we have right now, and um, I can also check with the manager to see if there's uh, any plans to do an overhaul of the uh, town council fee schedule anytime soon. Sounds good. Great. That on our workshop agenda. And then the other item that's been referred to us is that also on our workshop agenda? Yes, it is. In the Good. growth areas. Good. To, and are we going to have someone who presents that to us? I'm going to make that inquiry. Good. That because that would be helpful. And they may be asking for someone to go to an ordinance committee meeting to talk about the planning board's position on roosters. Okay. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> you never disappear. All right. Any other business at this point? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Just a good night.